they don't want their police officers to wear uniforms at Safety Town because they want the kids to know that they're real people. What they're missing is, now that's great later on in life. That's in the middle school, you want to sit down and wrap with them, that's fine. One of the most important things that we have working with this age group is that the uniform holds authority. I don't care what uniform it is, a doctor's uniform, nurse's uniform, kids at this age are treated with uniforms. Okay, I don't care, if you can talk to any teacher that's been teaching Safety Town for a while, and I can talk to the kids about crossing the street for two days, and the police officer will talk to them for five minutes, and the, kids, the parents will come the next day and say, my kid comes and says, Mommy, and what officer feels that I have to stop my kid at the curb? I've been standing up for two days. Okay? But they usually so take advantage of that, plus the fact that we want them to know what the uniform is. We've got a couple of pages that a police officer describing his uniform. What's the most, one of the most important tools to a police officer? It's a pen. Kids do not even know that you have a pen. Why do you need that? Because you get lost, I need to identify. One of the things that we're talking about getting kids with their name, address, and phone number, one of the things we have on the second, I think on Thursday of the second week, we have a special chair for the police officer. Okay? And each group, we have 10 groups. Group instructor number one would send one of her kids at a time. The police officer would put, her up, put them on his lap, let them more than hat, and the child would recite his name, address, and phone number to the police officer. That takes almost the whole entire day, whether it's indoor or outdoor facilities. But what a great way for a relationship. Remember I talked about developing that? Not because one of the very good, one of the safety towns I saw that was excellent was the man did the police officer the first day. He had two dads and checked with them before. He called them up on the side of them. And he said, Now if you were if you needed help and had to get a police officer, how, how would you know which one how do you know which one of us is a police officer? He says, because of your uniform. He said, Well that's why you're a uniform. So you if I was dressed like them, you wouldn't know for it. I can't remember the age level. Later on in life, I think it's great to sit down and talk with the kids with regular clothes, but I would highly recommend you use that place, the uniform, as I said, any uniform, uh, as much as possible. Okay, let's start. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to, uh, what do I want to say, Russ Lowy's protege? Yes. <laughs> you're all you're up. I'm with Brexville Police Department. This will be quick because I'm new at this. I uh, worked a little bit with it last year, and I'll be doing it the, this year on. Like you said, Russ Lowe has been doing it for about 20 years, so I got some big shoes to fill. We hold ours in an elementary school in town, which is nice. We got uh, a couple, the whole. We got the gymnasium, and we use a couple classrooms. We got one classroom set up at the tables where they do their their busy work and their coloring, and we, and we teach them. Then we have another room set up as like an audio visual room where we do some film stuff. We can go in there and. They, Sit on the, uh, we got carpet set up for them in there. Then just outside that door, we have our safety town set up with the buildings and all. We have to bring ours in and out every day, which is a little bit of a hassle. But the, it's nice because that facility is right there. Um, we have a bus driver come in one day, who's one of our dispatchers, and she takes them around and gives them bus safety. Uh, we also. Proud of that. Um, when we're talking about motorcycles, let's talk about bicycles for a minute here. Uh, big part of safety town because this age group. Is not ready to ride more bicycles by themselves, big ones. Okay. Make sure if when you're going to talk about bicycle safety in your program that you use a small bike with training wheels. We've had many complaints from communities where they would use, and I did this myself for a while. I used a bicycle that one of my teens drove or drove to safety time. Now remember, they're just like a driver, so they drove to safety time. Um, and we showed the ten wheel, ten speed. The kids telling me about bicycles. You don't know how many kids came with their mothers and said, "What? My kids said they, they need a bicycle just like you were showing them." Okay. You have to remember that kids look at things differently than we do. Now, here's the problem with bicycles. The American Pediatric Association, that we deal with a great deal with, based on a lot of research, not just in this country but other countries, children. Their findings are children do not understand the concept of traffic safety until ages 9 to 10 years of age. That's totally, I mean, this is Sweden, this is uh, Canada, the United States, a lot of countries have done in-depth research on it, mainly Sweden, because they did an extensive research. Okay, they hit cameras and trees and watch kids all over. Now, this is when they said the children can really, most of their motor skills are developed, the coordination, 
uh, the vocabulary, everything, the whole body, physically, mentally, is developed. Now, if we put children, if we promote and encourage children to ride bicycles, bicycles at four and five years of age, what we're saying is they're, they're not ready yet, but we're, we're telling them to do it. Yes, you and I know, I know we, they ride, they ride. My concern and your concern is how to teach them properly. So what we can do, we have to work both ends into the center. Okay? We know that they're not capable of handling all these situations, especially in the street, because by law, folks, and we have police officers here, by George Wilson was here for the Department of Highway Safety, by law, once you're in the street, you must conform to every rule in the road. Right, police officers? Every rule in the road. Okay. Now, here we have a five-year-old with a two-wheel bicycle. Okay, barely, the inner muscular development's getting there, but a little wobbly. And we're telling him, you have to make a turn signal, so he eliminates 50% of his controlling device. And does this, okay? <laughs> we well, have to step. Eliminate turn signal. Don't even teach them. They don't need them. They shouldn't be riding in the street. When they get old enough to ride in the street, they'll have another course in the school on bicycle safety. Do not spend time. Eliminate turn signal. You don't need them. We're going to teach what they're going to do right now. Within the next year, that they're going to be alive, from four, five, and six, we're going to teach them right now. Okay? Take that time and teach them more about toy safety or water safety, or electrical safety, not to put things to cords, but don't spend that time on something that they're not going to be doing for three or four more years in the street. Do you want a five-year-old on the street riding a bicycle? Okay, that's, and that's when you have your parents session, you have your parents along, please get back to your parents and say, parents, I know that your kids want to ride bicycles, and I know you want them to have bicycles. If you, depending on the area, if you live in a cul-de-sac area, some parents have gotten together and kids can ride at a certain time, between 12 and 3, before parents come home from work or whatever. Get together and decide a safe place. How do you know? We did, I did a research study in 1974, 75, okay? Because I was rewriting the original books. This is their third update. Uh, I went into the Bicycle Institute of America in New York because I thought they already had the information. I'm not going to duplicate it. We don't duplicate it. We give you other people's names to contact yourself. Uh, so I said, what do you have on bicycle information that I can include in the curriculum for four and five-year-old children? Well, Cliff Morris and his executive director, Cliff was the president of the organization, just laughed at me. What, what are you going to do? Are you going to tell children to ride bicycles at four and five years of age? I said, no, I'm not going to tell them they're already riding. I want to tell them the safe way. Oh, well, maybe just in your community, but nobody else does. I mean, I felt like, you know, I was an idiot, so I was and I said, honestly, around the country, kids are riding bicycles at four and No, they won't listen. So I went home. We spent $2,000, my husband and I, over there, much more than that. We sent out 2,000 requests, uh, 2,000 um, surveys around the country by 50 of our safety towns. Okay, 50 safety towns each had one each. For parents, four pages of questions. What type of bike? How old was your child who received the first two-wheel bike? Did it have a... Uh, uh, Training wheels, what type of brake, all these kinds of things. Some of the responses were, I didn't know whether people were being funny and being comedy or comedians for a period of time or what, but 90% of the kids had some form of two wheel on before their fifth birthday. But some of the things that were scary, and as I said, we laughed at them and then we didn't know we thought they were being funny, we weren't serious. Uh, what made you think, what made you feel your child was ready for a two wheel bicycle? All right, some of the comments. Because grandma and grandpa said he was. Because everybody on the block had one. The neighbors would think my child was retarded if I didn't get him one. He wanted one. I mean, is this child ready for a tuba bicycle? What do you do with a tuba bicycle? Put him, pull him on and just say, go, are you ready? Watch out. Watch out for what? Okay, they're going to ride in the street. The grates are this way. Okay, yes. We've talked in Washington about changing the grates this way. because it going to a lot of taxpayers' money, so they're going to stay this way. Uh, there's just so many things. A child has to, has, you know, from a child's point of view, they're riding in the street and they hear a horn or they hear something. They're not going to do this because they haven't learned how to do this. They're going to do this. This is why one of the very first things you're going to teach your instructors on safety town is to show the kids how to turn their head. You watch four and five year old children, even six year olds or older, when you tell them to look both ways. Okay? Now, why, is, why can't we just do that? Because if we do that, they only have one-third peripheral vision. 
they can't see out here. So that's why you have to take your heads and actually show them. And when you do that, a lot of them are going to say, ouch, that hurts. Sure, because there's a muscle development still going on there. All of this is so important to understand what is it, what we're going to say, and I like to refer to it as teaching effectively. If a child doesn't understand what you're saying, don't say it. Make it simple, make it easy for them, and show them. Don't just say look both ways. Show them how to step their feet. Show them how to turn their heads. They, you've got to do that. Don't assume that they know how to do it. You've got to do that. Okay. We've had people asking us why our kids aren't wearing helmets while they're in safety. Helmets. Okay. Did you hear? Did you read our newsletter? By 1992, that will be mandatory. Okay. Now, and I'm glad you said helmets. I, I just came back from a conference, and everyone talks about bike helmets. They have to be helmets for Hot Wheels just as well. Let's just call them helmets. Eliminate the word. Then I listen to that, and then the parents are saying, what are you doing for me? Those of you who go into uh, the schools, into the older age group, make sure you tell the kids to keep the helmets on their heads. They're finding out that some of the kids are taking the helmets and putting them on their handlebars. Then when they go to turn, they can't turn because it's blocking their turning device. So make sure. In fact, Kmart, I'm going to write a letter to Kmart, because Kmart has an ad, full page ad, and kids stand with the bike with the helmets on the handlebars. And I don't know. Now, you think something like Kmart would have known that they do that. But uh, again, see, when we say bike helmets, that's what the kids think. They run just, so when they say they're hot wheels, their hot wheel isn't a bike to them. It's a trike, and it should be, because that's what, what it is. But they don't look at it as a bicycle. A bicycle is what their bigger brother is. And I'm all for bicycle, uh, bicycle, believe me, but again, I'm all for letting children be children. Okay, they're going to ride, they only have a short time. And I tell parents when I talk to parent group, your child's only going to be small for a few years. Let them be children. You know, they can't ride a tricycle when they're eight, nine years of age. Let them ride the tricycle. Let them ride the little wet, red wagon. We've taken so much weight from childhood now. Uh, when we talk to pediatricians, they have, the, the percentage of ulcers in kids now is increasing so much with the stress that we're putting our kids. The latch key, the, the single parent, um, the Adam Walsh program that somebody was talking about, they have a list of about 13, 14 things the kids have to do. They come and double bolt the door, look through the thing. That's one area of safety. What about the electrical thing? What about the hot water thing? I mean, they can't remember this without going for the evidence. When a child says to you, how many times have you seen a parent, I don't care if it's a relative or something, and says, tell, tell Uncle Pat you need him, there's the phone number. Go on, I told you yesterday, you know, tell him. I don't know, tell me. I mean, the parents upset with the kid, and the kid's being honest. He doesn't know, he forgot. Now, we had, uh, I'm going to tell you about a survey. A lot of these things I'm telling you, you can do with surveys, okay? I did the research, you can do just as much as, as I did. Uh, take a four or five year old child to the curb. Ask that child when it's safe to cross the street. Depth perception, they can't tell. They don't know the car is. You'll find one kid that cars all the way downtown Cleveland says, no, you can't go across the street because he sees a little, little <laughs> light coming. Another kid, there's a car right here because they can't judge distance. No, they have no idea with this. Um, so I, I told the parents, I said, take different kids out. Your own children or neighbor kids or whatever, take them to the curb and ask them. And then you want to do this with safety time. Tell your parents, look, we still want you to hold your hands crossing the street. But slowly transform that responsibility to them. You can start saying, all right, Joan, you tell me. When is it safe? But not after one time given the whole free freedom. Just slowly. When they're ready, each child develops differently. And each child is, is different. Another thing is on recall. Children have a difficult time with recall. They need identification to get the recall process functioning. Okay? I could say to you, and even some of you, and I'm sure I would, I don't have a problem with this. Can you tell me what you did today, starting when you came to school this morning, when you came to class this morning? What's the first thing you did? You have to stop in order. Okay. Uh, kids are the same way. How many times when you, do, have you ever heard a child, a mother come, what did you do at safety time today? Roll the cars. Even if they didn't roll the cars, they roll the cars. It, it was funny because you said that. They rolled the car. Okay. Now, what I did is I divided my class in half. I divided A to B. I asked the parents on this side to do a research program with me. Okay. I said, when you pick your child up from safety time, they had to come in into the classroom and get their child from the instructors, you just don't let them go out because we've had the wrong parents take wrong kids and all that kind of stuff. The kids just see everybody going and they're going to go. You saw a kid 
walk down the street walk. So they stay at their table, the parents come with the instructor, the instructor knows who's to pick them up, and that's the kind of thing. Um, but I asked this group, I said, well, you pick your child up, what you know, what do they Ask your child, what did you do today? First thing you see, what did you do today? See what they respond. And I said, at the end of two weeks, I'd like you, if you want to make some notes, so at the end of two weeks, I can put some information down. In this side, I said, don't say anything to your child. Just say, do you have fun today? Go home, and, and then later on in the day, ask them what they did. Okay, now this had a very high percentage of children later on, after nap, usually, talking about, and the, mainly when after the parent came home, the dad or mom came home from work, they talked about the program. This one, 90% of the people said, nothing. What did you do today? Nothing. I rode in the cars. Very little of information. Uh, I took this information, and I met with the child psychologist. What makes this? How does this happen? I was the one who always asking how come and why. We didn't have files and stuff when we started this. And they said the two, which <coughs> a two hour control period is almost identical to an eight hour adult working. Okay, the last thing you want to do after eight hours of hard work is come home and somebody question you about what you did from the, day, from the time you left. You want some free time, you want to be quiet, then you want to talk. And they said that's the same thing with kids. Plus, the kids need the identification. When you hold up the stop sign, when they see a stop sign, that's a stop sign, Mommy, that's red and white. We learned about that, safety challenge day. So that's why we need the review materials to, to show the kids, because the recall is, is necessary. They have to have the identification to trigger the recall system of what they've done. Okay, and that's so important when you ask the review questions on the Thursday. You might say to a to child, uh, what is the stop sign? And they'll say it's red and white. You, do you want the child to see what color it is, how many signs to it, what is it you want? One of the most difficult things for kids to answer is what is the cross for? Because they didn't know that. So you want to change that as where do we cross the street? Okay, cross for. Uh, how many of you are teaching mid-block crossings, crossing between parked cars? Okay. Now you teach that car, and I'm, I'm happy to see that. You teach that, uh, stop saying kids never go between parked cars. Because if they live in an area where there are parked cars, they're going to do it. Now let's pretend there's a car here and a car here. You want to teach this car, this as the edge of the road. Most kids are killed, according to National Safety Council, dart out is the number one killer of kids in traffic. And that's because they dart out. Okay? Now, kids cannot see over the hood of cars. They're small. In order to see, and we say the first thing you do before crossing the street is look both ways, right? Wrong. The first thing you do is stop your feet. Kids told me that. They wrote the curriculum, that's why it's so good. Okay, and I said, look both ways. And, and I said, you didn't stop. And he said, you didn't tell me. And I didn't. I didn't tell him. Okay? First thing you stop your feet. Then you look and you listen. Alright? But treat this. Have your park cars in our slide presentation we have. Have your park cars. Boys and girls. It's best to cross and across. And first of all, a lot of what we're doing in Safety Town, we shouldn't be doing by themselves. They shouldn't be crossing the street by themselves. Okay? Have a parent and adult with them. They're not old enough to do this. But boys and girls, if you're playing outside and there's cars parked and your ball goes, don't chase the ball. Either go get mommy or daddy. If you have to go, stop here and look to see if no cars are coming. It's hard for kids. It's so hard. If, if Johnny's across the street and boy, Jimmy's playing with Johnny and Johnny's on two-week vacation, all of a sudden Jimmy looks out and there's Johnny and he's got to slip right across the street. You know that. That's spontaneous reaction. They're going to do that. That's their behavior. Uh, this is why it's so important for us to repeat and repeat and tell parents. The reason we have the word introduced to our program, we didn't at first, but some of our coordinators got when we got to conferences like this, would tell us that they actually heard on graduation day, and our teenage instructors were the ones that got upset about this, they actually heard some of the parents telling their other parents that they won't have to worry about Johnny crossing the street now because he went through safety town. Now, if that's the message that we're going to give our parents, then we're going to kill more kids than if we didn't teach the program at all. We've got to explain, you've got to, on, on orientation day, and on graduation day and any other parent sessions that you have in between, you've got to get that message across to the parents. That all we're doing is introducing, just like math, you make a comparison with math, English, whatever you want to do. It's just an introduction. We're teaching the one, two, threes. They're not, we don't want them to cross the street by themselves. We 
want them still to be with, with mom and dad. We, we would put them down in front of a computer after 20 hours. They're just learning the, the, the ABCs and the one, two, threes. That's the same thing we have to do with this. It's so important for parents to understand that. And believe me, parents, you have no idea, maybe some of you have, how many parents used to come up to me and say, you know, I don't want my child riding a bicycle, but I don't know what to do. I wish you would do something. I wish you would do something. They want that. But it's so hard, to, you know, as a parent, when your child wants a bike and everybody else has a bike. And, and I lived, when I started this program, I was two and three and a half. I was two and three and a half. My kids were two. I, I've been getting two. I have to explain. I've been getting two and three hours of sleep the last week and a half. <laughs> so I'm uh, quite tired. But uh, my girls were two and three and a half. And we lived in Bedford Heights. There were no sidewalks. We lived on a hill with curved around. We had neighbor girls that tied a jump rope to a, a parking sign around the bend, and they had the jump rope across the street. Okay. My, we planted a bush two thirds down the driveway, and that was as far as our girls were allowed to go. Anybody came in, and we had Bedford Heights was called Bedford Heights by that time. So we had a lot of kids in the neighborhood. Anybody came into Miss Dorothy's, but I was a teacher in nursery school at the time. So it was Miss Dorothy's yard, uh, or Tammy Lynn's yard. Number one, I, I have a tendency to talk fast and put things together. I think I mentioned to somebody, I talk in generalities and I have to be on specifics, so especially in the short period of time, I'm trying to do 28 years worth in a few hours. Uh, let me clarify the bicycle situation, and I will talk slow. <laughs> what all the safety towns have some form of small car, okay, a hot wheel. We recommend the Hot Wheels, not even tricycles. Hot Wheels, you can put the safety belts on. And if you're an RAC program, that's a requirement. You must have seat belts on the cars. Okay? Keep the Hot Wheels. Now, we, the reason we do not recommend tricycles, especially the high seat tricycles, they were ruled as unsafe vehicles by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. And I'm talking about the bigger tricycles, because what happened, I'm going to have to move over here to show you. Okay? Now, remember, I'm little. And the bike's here. And I can't get my foot over, so I'm going to pull the bike this way and it comes right down on me. Okay? Everyone follow that? Okay? The big thing. Okay, so that was rules of unsafe. And by the way, uh, one of those research study won uh, the Golden Police Award because the government paid $250,000 to find out why children fall off tricycles. Two findings. They hit an object or they fall off. Okay. <laughs> Senator Fox and I gave them a police award for $250,000. <laughs> All right, but that's why we do not, and plus the fact on the tricycles, we haven't found a way to install the safety belts, okay? And the, low tri the, the hot wheels, as I said, they're, they're open on the side and any age child way can fit. Now that is the car that you use on the safety town. The bicycle I was talking about was to use simply as a demonstration on the day that you talk about bike safety. They're not to be used on safety town at all. Just on the day when the police officer has the bike in the front of the room for demonstration model, then you have the small bike with the, the training wheels. And we didn't want to go too expensive. Buying the bike, we thought we'd use the one that the teenagers had. And, but go too expensive, or let someone bring in a training wheel bike. But make sure you have a bike on display there. Someone mentioned I, the talking bike, or, and I heard that. But that's so much of driving at night and giving turn signals and all. That's not relevant to Age. It's, I know there's, there's not very much out there. There's more and more coming. Uh, because believe me, I tried to get a car made, a special car for safety town. And no, nobody's going to talk to us that's in the business of, of corporation unless it's money to them. And I'm so now we're getting larger again. You know, we're talking, we talked to little tykes about making the car specifically a safety town car. That would be, I want a real car just like that, but with pedals rather motorized because we want to help the muscular development and so forth. And uh, you're talking, they want to know how many millions we're going to buy at our garage and our warehouse <laughs> to, to house all that. And a lot of people get them donated from local communities, really, from Kmart, Walmart, wherever they are geographically. Uh, so remember, let's make sure it is every day in the program, you use that the little hot wheels, low to the ground, to make sure you put safety belts. Even if you're not RAC, please put the safety belts in them. If you don't know how to install them, you're going to send the book, uh, very simple, and the organizational manual is a picture of the, of the car and everything in there. 
Uh, by the way, make sure in your terminology, and this is in the curriculum, the primary words that you want to use for the children in talking is driver and walker. The secondary word is pedestrian and motorist. Because it's extremely difficult for children of that age to say pedestrian and motorist. The tongue placement, they don't have teeth, okay? So they're going to be drivers and walkers. And then, like the second week, you can start you can write the word pedestrian or tell them. Sometimes on television, or you'll tell your mom or daddy say motorist or pedestrian, and that's another word. You're increasing the vocabulary. But use driver and walker as a major word, okay? Um, somebody asked me about the helmets being national. Uh, that will be passed in Washington. Not too distant future, mandatory helmets. I don't know what ages, but they are allowed for that now. The National Head Injury Foundation is just doing a super job on that. Uh, and I said, in the next few weeks, you'll see just tons. We just saw a preview of Charlotte, many, many uh, uh, helmets that will be on the market. Make sure you look inside. The approval initials are, I think it's NSHI National Spinal Head Injury Institution or something, but it's NS. SI will be in their approved government uh, I mean, the approval, just like it was on the car seats. Uh, we do have, and I'm sorry I don't have with me, we just had the PM from the printers. We're coming out with a new um, sticker next year. We'll have t shirts and things to go along with it called Hugs Not Drugs Will Help Our Kids to Just Say No. We combine the two in there. A mom, or a child, it is a mom holding a child hug, and the child's holding the mom, and the stickers are about three inches thick red and white, and they're very, very durable. So we will provide them to, to that a little more. Um, the instructors, uh, I would highly recommend, again, you do what you like, it's what you feel comfortable with, but keep your ages open. You might get a 12-year-old that's excellent, you might get a 16 or 18-year-old that's excellent. Uh, if you want to set rules, that's fine. And also, you will find some kids uh, who you think might be great. Maybe they're future teachers or national honor. Uh, they're going to be the worst ones. And if you're going to find some kids who just come in and say, I want to help, they'll be the best ones. It's difficult. And I think the screening process you have is great. And I, uh, Fred Keck has come to our seminars for years. And he's a great person. And I want to give him a lot of credit. But by the same token, I have to give some credit to a man who before him, Fred Bonamolo. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, he was, he's great. Still is a great person. And Frank Bonamolo helped me go around to some the other safety towns to the police chiefs and, and help us set up. Uh, so there's a long history of. Right. of uh, I'm not going to get any creativity away from Fred, but no, I know, I know, I, coming yeah. through the years, he's picked right. up a lot from a lot of people and sharing. Right. It's great. Uh, and I think this is great. Uh, I've been, I'm asked around the country, uh, do we have the best safety town in the country, on the world? And I said, that's not, I, we don't judge it that way. Do you have the best safety town for your community? If you live where a lot of railroad crossing, and you're not teaching railroad crossing to children at all, then you don't have a good, good program. You have to teach what's best for your community. As I said, remember to teach the whole gamut of various things, but your concentrations should be on a railroad. If you're rural, if you're, listen, in the rural areas, we have to go to farm equipment. You have to gear your program of what you're doing with, what your kids are involved with. Okay? So there's no such thing as a great safety test. It's, and that's not, I'm happy to hear him say he's proud of the safety town. That's great. That, you, can you feel the, the excitement, the, the enthusiasm, the positive? He's not going to have any trouble with raising funds or getting anybody because he believes in it. And I know all you do. Everybody everybody has different ways of doing it. Some are very quiet. They do it quiet and um, you know, They are cooperative. The fire department shows us the fire engines and all that. Who, is, who does the orientation? Who does the graduation, orientation graduation? Do you do that? Yes. Okay. I would highly recommend uh, that you simply say, you can use us, that you came to a seminar, and if you were very, very unhappy to hear that you were the only, one of the few, if not the only community that you know of in the area that does not have a full-time police officer, say that to your parents uh, nicely. Don't be negative. Just say that you were very disappointed to hear this. And if you say that enough time, I, I bet something will get back. If not, give us a call. Uh, a little bit of what his approach is that, you know, you're just unhappy that so many, you know, communities talked about the good public relations and it does you're just unhappy. And you might even ask if there's any parent in the audience that knows of how you can increase your police thing to please see you after to come up. Anybody have any other ideas? Okay, but use us. Don't be 
be afraid to use us. You know, yes. if you have a question, please uh, give us a call. We got a call a couple of years ago from the Toledo area. Somebody was going into merchants and saying that they're representing us collecting donations. We do not do that type of solicitation. If you hear anything about the organization, National Safety Town Center or the International Child Safety Town Center, please give us a call. We had, through the years, oh, we had <laughs> an insurance company in the state of Illinois duplicated our uh, stationery. We sell insurance policies to kids from Safety Town. Uh, we had somebody in uh, Texas that took the R for Clancy shirt and was manufacturing and selling. We had, and that's why we registered the program, folks, to keep a nonprofit. This was the biggest reason in 1974, 73, when we registered it. Uh, we had three men in the state of New Jersey selling Safety Town for $12,000 to the community, thanks to Wayne, New Jersey Police uh, Superintendent Bob Boyle, who called us and told us, and we had to register and protect it to keep a nonprofit. So, uh, someone said they didn't know there was an organization. And that's one of the things that we talked about before. We've got to do more to tell you what we've been doing for you. We're delighted about the program, but people say, National Safety Town Center, what do you do? Pe you know how many people don't even know that there's a national organization or an international organization? Uh, but, you know, that's fine. Our concern was the kids in the program, and nothing pleases me more. You know, we get newspaper clippings, and some of the duplication of the local communities, that's what the books are for. I mean, they'll take complete paragraphs out of the books and, and put their quotes on, and that's wonderful. It's, we're so excited. That's the whole purpose of it. All we will ask that you please, whenever you do the media, whenever media contacts you, please tell them that you are a part of the National Safety Town Center, that there is a parent organization, whatever you can, to help them know that they're a national organization. You're going to be doing a lot, for, especially a lot of people who leave your community. Uh, now, we're fortunate here with all the work with the program, but when we start a program in a community, like we did at, let's say, Zaysville with Judy West, Judy West was not the actual teacher. She was a coordinator. So we worked with her. Now, if she doesn't instruct her teacher, because the teacher is the one that's going to meet the people that are going to be coming every day. If she doesn't instruct the teacher about <coughs> who we are, they're never going to know. I mean, it's great for her to tell them what they're doing in Zaysville, but we want you to say, now here's an address, contact or phone number, call the National Safety Town Center, they have the information out. Because those people just, so we have calls all the time in the office, ask Bill, where people say, I'm going through all this, I didn't know you have a curriculum, I didn't know you had this all put together, why am I spending all this time doing this? Okay? Uh, you're really going to help them a great deal. That's, it's just a matter of a lot of things sharing. Like I said, we've got to give a lot of credit to a lot of the, the young kids and a lot of the teenagers. When I was doing the teen book, uh, the teenagers, they, we sat down and they worked on it. We worked on it. They did a lot of it. Didn't they? We had to check with the, the, you know, make sure that the law was correct on a lot of things. And, and what they were saying was the kids could handle. But we have to work, just work all together. What I'm doing is really just sharing with you. I have the opportunity, the wonderful fortune of, of traveling around the country and other countries um, to see programs and, and to meet. Uh, I've, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of, and talked to thousands of thousands of parents and teachers and police officers. And what I'm doing is just sharing what I see around the country and you pick out areas and what's best for your, your, your program. Uh, I'm not going to say I can do a lot of thinking and doing it on my own. I did, but uh, it's a lot of uh, sharing type thing. We talked about, uh, someone mentioned parent sessions. Now, in our curriculum, and those of you, how many of you have our curriculum, have our manuals, by the way? Okay. Now, uh, in the curriculum, we have the parent child sessions. Now that simply means when the parents, instead of the parents, if you have a 10 to 12 session, let's say, uh, if your parents, instead of your parents come back at 12, have them come back, have them come back at 11, 30 or quarter to 12. Let's say you're going to have them come back at quarter to 12. And you're going to have kids in the classroom, inside, and you're going to have chairs in the back of the parents. And simply tell the parents to sit in the back, you don't want to talk to them, just sit there and observe. You tell the kids the first day or two, make sure if they stay there. Uh, they're not going to be excused until the teacher or police officer tell them to go to their tables. Whatever your rules are, make sure the kids know. The first day or two, it's going to be hard. After that, it's going to be very easy for them. Uh, but then the parents come in the last 15 minutes. Now, let's say you have 40 children and only 10 parents come because each parent is bringing four children to come. You only have 10 parents back there. What you want to do that last 15 minutes is go over what we call the parent-child session. Let's say you have the kids there, and I'll say, uh, boys and girls, 
What did we do today? Anybody tell me what we did today? What did the fire department? Did you have fun at the fire department? What did you learn at the fire department? Susie, not to play with matches. Why not? Okay, go through this. Now the instructors have been trained. If the kids don't know, they help us. But usually the kids know. Okay. Um, then you go through all this. Now, the purpose for this, two excellent reasons. Remember I said education is repetition. We're doing a review with the children. Now, what have we done for those 10 parents without saying a word to them? Without saying to them, oh, what are you, how are you teaching your children about fire? What are you teaching them? How are you doing it? You're not confronting them at all. But they're, they're listening. Whether it's the day of the bus procedure, what's the bus procedure? What's the first thing you do? Wait in line behind the curb. You don't run into the street. All the rules, whatever your bus driver does, whatever your rules are, that's what you do every day. And that's how the parents can learn and help. Now, you only have 10 parents. So you want to make sure on orientation day you say to the, all your parents, parents, if you're going to be responsible for bringing four or five other children, or three or four, whatever, make sure the information that you hear every day, please pass on to the other parents. Whether it's at bowling, whether it's at playing cards, whether you're golfing, whatever you're doing, please share the information. That's the only way we're going to help our kids. We have to work together and all learn and all be in this together because a little child was hurt, not a child attending the program, but the mother was waiting in a nearby room and the child ran into a table or something and he was a stitch to the a three-year-old or something. And no one there knew what to do as far as first aid. They all got panicked when they saw this blood brush or blushing, I guess. And someone said, why don't we teach our parents something about first aid? So now what this is, is many communities are doing this. While the child is attending Safety Town, in another room, whether it's in a classroom, whatever building, they have an hour and a half session or two hour session, most of them are an hour and a half so they can get back to the parent-child session, on any topic that they want to decide. We've got so several suggestions in here, lead poisoning, fire safety, uh, basic CPR, first aid, what to do in case of emergency, the, all kinds of things to do. Poison in the home to explain to parents, uh, the Mr. Yuck stickers, why we don't use them and why we don't recommend them, uh, these types of things. But any lead poisonings, as I said, very, very important. Let me give you a few other topics. Microwave ovens, horrible tragedy. Many kids don't understand that. Drug tampering, drugs. Anything you want to have, whether you have, some communities have it every day other than the orientation and, and graduation day. Uh, if you want to have it once or twice a week, whatever. But make sure whoever you have, if you have somebody come from the American Red Cross, if you have a, a police officer come or a highway patrolman talk on legislation and, and the airbags or whatever you have that you want to have, make sure they are knowledgeable people. Don't expect those parents to sit there for an hour and a half and have some intern who's not knowledgeable, not, now I'm not saying interns are not knowledgeable. Don't get one or don't even get an adult who's not, not knowledgeable. Make sure they know what they're talking about. Uh, these are, we have a captive audience. These parents have to bring the kids. There's no bus. Anybody have a bus that brings their kids to safe town? The parents bring them. The parents have to pick them up. So for an hour and a half, instead of going back and forth, I would tell my parents, we're going to have some coffee and, and cake. I know you have a lot of things to do. You have washing to do. You have grocery shopping. But I only get to see you for a couple of days out of the year. Can't you come and spend some time with us? Bring some great speakers. Okay, get them involved with it. Uh, you only have 10 or 12 of them. You're not going to come to a, if you have a meeting on Monday night, um, <coughs> if you have a parent safety, how many are you going to get? Come. You're getting more than you could ever do. Uh, let me talk on Mr. Anybody use Mr. Young stickers? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Okay. Why don't we recommend Mr. Young stickers? Mystery Up stickers are very nice as any other stickers are. Uh, everybody know what we're talking about, Mystery Up stickers? Okay. However, you don't know Mystery Up? Okay. It's a, thank you. I appreciate that. It's a round circle, two eyes, and a, like, can you say, okay. That's a, it's a video. Sorry about that. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, that's the best you can <laughs> But, um, okay, that's Mystery Up. And the reason we don't recommend it, the several poison control centers should not recommend it either, by the way. But if you tell children, as I have heard parents say, or if teachers say, police officers, when you see this Mr. Yuck sticker on a bottle, let me hold the glass. I have to use visual if I can. Okay, I'm doing the opposite of what I tell you not to do with kids. I can't hold visual. 
Okay, this is poison. You put a Mr. Yuck sticker on here because it's poison. Now, boys and girls, when you see this Mr. Yuck sticker, it's yuck. It's bad for you. You get hurt, you get very sick, go to the hospital, don't touch it. It's bad. Now, a couple things. You, as very concerned parents, every time you come home from shopping, are you going to take everything that comes out of the bag and put a Mr. Yuck sticker on? Okay. What about when your child goes to grandma and doesn't see a Mr. Yuck sticker on this? What about when they play next door and they don't see a Mr. Yuck sticker? Is it okay? Sure, because if we said if it has Mr. Yuck, it's poison. It could hurt you. If it doesn't have Mr. Yuck, it's okay. Skull and crossbones used to be that, but it's not anymore because that's Captain Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Right. Uh, show it to the kids. And, you know. Mr. Yuck also said maybe I put it in my mouth and that's why I know it tastes yes. good. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, during this demonstration uh, that you saw in the video with Orange, what I would like for you to do, and that could take a good hour, bring have your teens, bring empty bottles of things. Bring empty bottles, if they don't make sure you get empty bottles of uh, cherry cough medicine, Vanilla, have them smell it. it. Smells like candy. Okay? Uh, again, this is wonderful for police officers who are doing uniform. Hail, have them smell it. Anybody, can you tell me? Pretend you're five years old, four or five years old. Let me take this with actual words. I'm oh, sorry. Okay? Tell me what this says. You're five years old. Can't read. Don't touch. Don't touch this. You don't know what's inside there. Okay? It smells good. But it's medicine, it could hurt you. You don't take anything unless given to you by mommy or dad. Okay? I'm sorry, thank you. You also <laughs> shouldn't smell it either. Well, the cherry thing you can. Cherry, a smell, a hand that you hold it far from them, the cherry. But the point you want to get across here is when they smell something like cherry. Because they, they smell, they're going to smell a cherry. I mean, that, that's a very strong flavor, orange flavor. And because there's orange aspirin and orange cough medicine, they're going to smell that. And they're more, much more likely to taste the orange, anything that tastes orange, rather than in our orange pop. You take a lot of aspirin in there, sick. That's a poor child you can't take. The smelling is, is no problem if it's just done really nicely. So I would not push the approach just, just for them to smell. Um, the microwave ovens that we talked about. Okay, big problem with kids. Last year, kids are increasing kids going home by themselves, going into the microwave oven. Kids have a difficult time determining what's cold. Is it out of the freezer? Is it partially defrosted? Many of you can't read instructions. But yet a lot of kids are doing this. Let me tell you one story that happened in California. This was a 17-year-old boy, not a four or five or six year old, a 17-year-old football player. Came home from school, had the little mini donuts in the refrigerator, jelly donuts. Put two in the microwave, fell them they weren't warm enough. Popped them back in. Okay? Felt that they were warm. They had liquid centers. He popped it in his mouth. 232 degrees Fahrenheit. Burned his esophagus was in the hospital for two weeks. This is a 17-year-old that should have known that a jelly liquid center would have been hot. Okay? And yet we expect our kids to do this. To handle all these situations. We have to be very, very careful. Uh, as I said, I, there's so many things kids are doing today. They're gonna, they should be doing. Uh, I, the one with the swimming pool. Did I tell you about the jug, throw the jug out in the water? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, that's, there's, is there a swimming pool in this country that doesn't have a lifeguard on duty? Isn't that the responsibility of a lifeguard to throw something out? Not a five-year-old kid throwing something out to somebody drowning in the lake in a pool? You wouldn't have a lifeguard at all. No, this isn't a pool. This no, I mean in a pool. Well, but what mother would leave four or five year olds swimming by themselves? I don't care where the child is. There's, there, this is what we have to get back on stressing the importance to parents to be parents, to take the responsibility. They have to assume the responsibility. Uh, you know, my mother worked, my father worked, but they made sure we had people. I worked, I made sure my people took care of my kids. We can't say, we can't, we, we can't expect children to handle that responsibility when they're not, they, they're not capable of Do an experiment. Have, have a five-year-old throw something out to somebody with the job going out to them. See if they don't hold on to that rope. My, my kids didn't know any better because the rope was there. Well, What's the response to the parent? The kids are by themselves. There were no parents with them. Well, see, parents, parents are assuming that children today are miniature adults. 
that's basically where it unless we start saying something we have to start teaching parents how to be parents and I'm not saying this in any way parents never learn this no and I'm not just saying safety okay but you talk what's happening to the measles situation the vaccine okay a lot of the young parents are not getting their children vaccinated you're having you're going to have an epidemic of some of these things again but there is so much research that's been done some of these things that we've been talking about 20 years i got them from the pediatricians documented research study on eye, eye reversal problems and all these why isn't this taught to, to children in school in junior middle school senior high is too late because a lot of them get married before then why isn't this taught on child development certain sounds of women the s of age and the r is different all this should be taught to children on how to parent. Day by day, you can't do that, but I've heard parents just constantly yell at children for things that I know that their kids are. The parent doesn't know that. The parent thinks it's, it's, they're doing a good job because they raised the raising kids the way that they did. And so, if you have the Walt Disney posters, used to be excellent. They do not have, well, we hope to get the copyrights from them to reproduce them. Anybody use the old Walt Disney posters? I'm, they're really in bad shape. Yes, and they, school craft has been, you know, ever since Walt Disney died, he's probably turning over his grade 50 times what they're doing to him. Um, but uh, they closed that section. And we, a couple years ago, two or three years ago, I met with them, and they said, if we want the copyrights, we can make them other things. So I'd like to just get that reproduced. Because they're so excellent. They're just, they're so excellent. Um, they are excellent. <laughs> but uh, and what's great about it is that every poster had a cartoon character, and you could hold up the, the character uh, poster and have the child identify the character, and then ask yes. what's so that. Now, what we're going to do in staying uh, with the schedule is present to you our certificates of appreciation uh, for attending the conference or the seminar. And when we we're going to move this back, and we're going to take pictures of you. And I'm going to get those, we'll get those uh, uh, immediately developed and we'll send them to you. We'll send you uh, two copies, one for yourself and one we'll send you the news release for you to submit to your local paper within the next two or three days so they can get it. And hopefully they'll put it in. Some communities have, uh, have done that very well in um, So we do want you to come up. If you're with the group, we're going to have you all come up to take a group shot because they won't do three pictures of the same person, uh, three separate pictures in there. Um, now, when we present this certificate to you, I always like to tell people, look, it's just a piece of paper and has some wording and some little coloring on it. However, when I present this to you, it, it's a lot more, means a lot more to, to me than just a piece of paper. Uh, to me, it's presenting you with a little piece of paper that reminds you of how, <coughs> how we feel about you, your dedication, your concern about taking time to help kids, uh, your devotion to your community it just means an awful lot to us so don't please don't look at it just a piece of paper we hope you'll take it and maybe put it in a frame and every time you look at it think of us saying thank you for taking time for caring and sharing about our kids by the way we're doing a promotion with SeaWorld um, the end of September I believe you'll get information on it there'll be so much it's going to be like safety